Hello my fellow riders, this is Chris at Riding Reviews and today we're going to be looking at the Lexmoto Yardia Elex. Today we're going to be looking at the Lexmoto Elex or the Yardia C-Line. They're both pretty much the same bike. And we're going to do this the same way we normally do. Spec, design, comfort, cost of riding and pros and cons. Now remember to hit that thumbs up because that helps the YouTube algorithm put my videos up to the top of the searches and it helps me get more views. More views means that I can do more videos. So please do that. No. So anyway, I digress. Let's get on with it. Spec. This bike is 2 horsepower or 1500 watts. Out of all the Lexmoto motorbike, electric motorbikes or electric scooters, this is the lowest horsepower out of all of them. But still, it's still going to have more torque than a petrol equivalent, just because of the way it works. Now, saying that this has the lowest horsepower output, but it has the most amp power in the batteries. Now I'm not 100% sure exactly what is better. From what I understand, the higher the voltage, the more torque you get out of the motor, but this has the highest ampage with the lowest voltage. So again, that's probably where the two horsepower thing comes in. But in theory, this bike should go further than the other ones because number one, it's using less power, and number two, it's got more amp powerage and power ridge to pump out to the bike. And it comes with two batteries and it will run on one. So you can potentially have one here, one on charge, go out for a 25 kilometer ride, come back, stick the other one in, or go out, or put them both in at the same time and go out and do your 50 kilometer ride, whichever way you wanna do it. So obviously, because it is a, an, electric, an electric bike, it has LED everything. So LED front lights, LED rear lights, LED indicators. And I will show you that in a minute, but because of how I do my videos, I had to take the batteries out. So when we put the batteries back in, then I will do you a look around the bike, but that is a different part. So we have Obviously the key, there is an alarm on this bike. And you have in the box, you've got two uh, breaker switches. Lift up this panel here. Sorry for the shaky footage, but um, the best way to deal with that is just deal with it. So as you can see in here, you've got cable one, cable two. Make sure the key's off and you get one of these big batteries. These probably cost a couple of hundred pound each. So stick them in the hole. A couple of hundred as in 400 probably. Plug in lead number one. Again, another one. You can charge these external off the bike. So I'll show you the charging lead in a minute. Make sure they're both the same way. Push that down, put that in, and we have power. Put a casing back on. Now, out of all of these electric equivalent scooters, um, electric scooters, not electric equivalent, out of all the electric scooters, this is the only one with the batteries underneath the seat rather than underneath the footrest. So as you can see, you have a USB charger. Again, because it's made out yard, yard here, you get some of the nice features there. A sprung loaded baggage catch, sprung loaded foot rest, push in. I can't put them back in. Oh, little touch. It's getting used to things. And you obviously have the clock. So to start the bike, you have to hold it down, press the P button and hold down the brake, press the P button and it will glow up. And you get to 
K is on S. K1 and K2. K1 is 23 miles an hour. K2 is 29. 28, 29 miles an hour. Indicators, so we'll have a look. Left, right. High beam, low beam. And this one has got the same lights at the front as the Yardia G5. But again, because they're LED, they are rather bright on there. So yeah, that, that is pretty much it. And as you can hear, they're gonna do it. Let's see if we can get the alarm to go off. Anyway, it has an alarm. It is rather annoying for us because the alarm goes off quite a lot. They are fairly sensitive. And there is a charger port. And with this as well, same as the Yardia G5, you can plug this in down here. And there's a plug socket. Just plug it in there, it goes into your wall socket and will take about eight hours. Maybe, yeah, about eight hours, six hours per battery. Something around those sort of area. If you want to charge them both up at the same time, you plug it into the front. If you want to charge them up separately, you take them upstairs, plug them in. Now, that is a good point. If you want to plug, uh, charge them up separately, you, you plug one in, do your work, make sure it's plugged into lead one and then it'll work. But you go, go to work, come back, change the battery, put the other one on charge, and then you can still use it for the 25 to 30 miles. If you have both of them in, you're more like 50 to 60 miles. As I said, the amp power is better on this one compared to the other, even though it has the lowest voltage output. Design. Now, as you can see, it is fairly snazzy. It does look quite similar to the other Yardia G5, apart from that big screen on the Yardia G5. This one is flush. And there is a picture here with this on. Indicators and lights, the styling on the G5 is slightly better, I think. Only a little bit, not, not as much. But this is a slightly smaller as well to that bike. These are a lot lighter than a standard motorized scooter. And other than that, there's not really a lot to say. They have their emblems, emblems on them. I can't say that word. And they have Lexmoto's trademark. This is the only one that has a Lexmoto name on it. The other two are different. Well, Lexmoto impulses, whatever. But anyway, yes, so there isn't that much to say on a design. Yes, it is very well put together. Yes, they do have some funky features. Um, and yes, they do have Bluetooth as well, but the app is still out there a little bit. Comfort, they have telescopic forks on the front and they have a twin shock absorbers on the back. 12 inch tires and yeah, they are designed purely for inner city riding, not necessarily for outer city or Scotland or stuff like that. But saying that, these would probably be good in Scotland because 50cc struggle with hills. So uh, an electric moped or motorbike is probably a good way to go because these shouldn't struggle as much with the hills. They will lose power. Uh, they will use more power on hills. So your range would be reduced, but it would be faster. Put it that way. The seat is, it feels like some sort of memory foam. It is fairly hard now. They will soften up again. The suspension will soften up and the tires will soften up a little bit in regards to the rubber, but then you put tire pressure in, so it doesn't really make that much difference. When we actually sell some of these, I will do some external test rides and we can go around. Um, but yeah, I don't really want to be putting on some miles without somebody buying them. So, yeah. Cost of riding. This bike is £1,699, as long as you get the 
OLEV grant, which you don't have to deal with. It's the person who sells you it has to deal with the OLEV grant. And then, um, so you get it for sixteen ninety nine plus seventy five pounds on the road for the DVLA registra registration fee and that sort of thing. Insurance on this should be three hundred and fifty to four hundred pounds, somewhere in that sort of region for a sixteen year old. If as you get older, it will get cheaper. And tax; these are tax exempt vehicles because they are EV vehicles, so they are tax exempt for now. They're not always going to be because as soon as uh, the numbers start dwindling on uh, petrol vehicles and diesel vehicles selling, then the government are going to start taxing them as well because they can't afford not to. Remember, helmet, gloves, jacket, minimum, boots that go up to at least your ankle. And I don't mean those ones that come all the way up here because... They're all right for sports bikes, but not so much for this sort of thing. Um, because you can't walk around them. Pros and cons. Pros, this bike has more torque than the petrol equivalent. Cost of running is really, really low. The weight of the bike is low. Um, emissions, obviously that is one of the major reasons at the minute that you would buy an electronic bike um, is not um, neutral, I wouldn't say it's neutral because you've still got the rubber coming off the tires and stuff like that and the cost of manufacture. So it's, never, it's not gonna be carbon neutral for quite a while, but it doesn't create any more carbon now. So, cons, it's an electric bike. You haven't got the fast charge capability, so charging a battery is gonna take somewhere in the region of six to eight hours. On this one for each battery, Unless you have it plugged in and it's charging both at the same time, then it will be about eight hours for the pet because of the way that uh, lithium ion charge, they charge really fast at the, at the beginning. When they get to 80%, they slow down and charge slowly. So yeah, that, that's a bit of a downfall. Obviously you've got range anxiety, but you can say that Petrol vehicles have range anxiety as well. You put five pound in a petrol vehicle, then it'll go about 30 miles. So somewhere similar to this sort of thing. And that, that's about it really. You can take the batteries out, take them upstairs, put them on charge and that's all good. So swings and roundabouts. If you're doing longer journeys, um, get a petrol vehicle if you're doing short journeys electric is a way to go so that's all i've got for the bike information so let's talk a little bit about the channel so at the minute because there's nothing to sell um i haven't been doing that many videos um not to sell because there isn't i haven't sold anything there hasn't been a lot to do videos on but i have got coming up soon i've got how to change a tire at home how to clean out your carburetor, and I'll probably be doing some stuff on my electric mobility scooter over the holiday period. Now, Cheap Bikes for Us is closing on the 24th at midday, and we won't be reopening until the 4th of January. A couple of other things, um, Yamazaki's and the uh, F50s are gonna be out of stock for quite a while. Importing is becoming a bit of a pain at the minute due to pricing and Euro 5 specifications, so we can't do that either. So that is pretty much my only update. I may be doing a live stream sometime during the uh, holiday period. So if you've got anything that you want to talk about, please comment below and we can talk about that. Also, um, also nothing, yeah, I've got nothing else. Hmm. Uh, we may do a video on how to ride in the winter period and rain and sleet and snow and all that sort of stuff. We can do videos on those. But yeah, if you've got anything to say, comment below. Hit that thumbs up. Remember, it helps me out a lot if you hit the thumbs up because YouTube 
um, knows that you guys like it so it increases my popularity on their platform. Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell to stay updated to all my latest content. Right up here we are going to have some more videos on the electric bikes and down here somewhere we are going to have some more videos whatever YouTube thinks you like and this part here subscribe stay updated all good but as always